west wind blows through the hills bending the wheat through the bracken over the gorse howling across the peat elf fires red in the sky and there's witches on the wind and it's into the darkness of winter we go as the wheel of the season spins and on the night so we when our fires are burning bright we'll call the holy lord to begin our pagan rite we'll come with sprigs of elder and we'll come with the leaves of you as we step out of the old and dance into the new on the hills the light the bonfires to burn upon the sacred ground shadows dance across the flames to the witch bell sound spirits call with haunted voices from the other side and it's into the darkness and out of the light as the earth turns with the tide and on this night so we when our fires are burning bright we'll call the holy lord to begin our pagan rite we'll come with sprigs of elder and we'll come with the leaves of you as we step out of the old and dance into the new To the summer land until the winter's fled. And on this night, so we, when our fires are burning bright, we'll call the Holy Lord to begin our pagan rite. We'll come with sprigs of elder, and we'll come with the leaves of you as we step out of the old and dance in. To the new
The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Merry meet and merry parts, bright the cheeks and warm the heart. For tread the circle thrice about to keep unwelcome spirits out. Bide within the law you must, in perfect love and perfect trust. Mind the threefold laws you should, three times bad and three times good. These eight words the read fulfill, and ye harm none, do what ye will. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Merry meet everybody and happy Thanksgiving 2022. You know, I'm thankful for lots of things this year, but I'm especially thankful for those of you who listen in to Stirring the Cauldron and also for the many wonderful guests from all realms of the metaphysical world who spend time with us each Thursday, and you'll hear them popping in with some Thanksgiving messages, holiday greetings, and a few interesting Thanksgiving stories. But since this is the beginning of the holiday season, it's also going to be kind of like a primer for the ho-ho-hos as well as the gobble-gobbles. I'm digging up some bits and pieces of other things, and we'll see what happens as the hour goes along. But let's begin with a greeting from our good friend, Graham Phillips. Hello, my name is Graham Phillips, and I am an author from England, as you can probably tell from my voice. And I write books about historical mysteries and the paranormal. And I've had the privilege of being on the show on a number of occasions. And I would like to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. And on the subject of Thanksgiving, I'd just like to share with you a a rather interesting story that I once investigated, a real-life haunting of a a, a cottage in a town not far from London called Sidcup. And in this cottage garden during uh, the fall time, or autumn as we call it in England, there used to be seen the ghost of a woman dressed in what people described as old-fashioned attire, probably something from the 19th century. Uh, a long dress and a bonnet and she used to be seen walking from the doorway to the cottage down a little driveway that led to the gate to the road and she was seen on a number of occasions and people who investigated the story were rather shall we say bemused as to who this ghost was and why she was appearing at that particular time and there seemed to be nothing in history that suggested that time was important throughout the year and one day a American visitor to England was uh, had heard about the ghost story and suddenly thought hold on a minute this ghost is always appearing on Thanksgiving Day which was something that most people in England weren't really familiar with and it turned out in the end that this ghost was supposed to be anyway, the spirit of a lady who had immigrated from England to America in the mid 19th century. So that is just an interesting little tale that I have to share with you about Thanksgiving Day. I think it's quite fascinating to be quite honest as nobody in this country actually realized the connection and, until an American came across and investigated it. Anyway, I wish you all again a very happy Thanksgiving. In case you think you know it all about the holiday season, I found a few little known holiday facts that you may or may not have heard of. So here's a rundown. First off, Jingle Bells was originally a song about Thanksgiving in 1857. The tradition of football on Thanksgiving began in 1876 with a game between Yale and Princeton. The first NFL games were played on Thanksgiving in 1920. There are four towns in the United States named Turkey. They can be found in Arizona, 
Texas, Louisiana, and North Carolina. Black Friday is not the busiest shopping day of the year. That distinction goes to two days just before Christmas. Now, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer got his start as an advertising gimmick for Montgomery Ward in 1939. November and December are two of the most dangerous months of the year because of holiday decorating injuries, 34% of which are falls. When the candy cane was invented in Germany, it was shaped in a J for Jesus Christ. The red stripes symbolize his blood. The average consumer spends $407 on Black Friday. Well, at least last year, that's what it was. And with inflation, it's going to be a lot more this year. December 25th was likely chosen because it coincides with the pagan festival of Saturnalia, where there was partying, gambling, and gift-giving. The ancient Greeks considered the mistletoe as an aphrodisiac, which is probably why kissing under the mistletoe will bring you luck in your love life. And those are some interesting facts, in case you were ever curious. Hello, Marla. Happy Thanksgiving to you. This is Scott from Dearly Departed Tours. I want to point out that this Thanksgiving is the sixth death anniversary of Carol Brady herself, Florence Henderson, who died of heart failure at the age of 82. Be careful around your dinner table. Did you know that both Pablo Picasso and the infamous Hide the Sausage Man, Jimmy Dean, both died while sitting at the dinner table? That's right. You're very welcome. Lots of love and chew your food. According to Joseph Geyer, author of the book Holidays Around the World, We often think of Thanksgiving as an American holiday, begun by the Pilgrims in Plymouth in 1621. At that time, the survivors of the Mayflower passengers celebrated their first harvest in the New World with a feast to which Governor Bradford invited the Indian chief and 90 of his braves. That was the first Thanksgiving Day in the New World. But actually, a Thanksgiving for the annual harvest is one of the oldest holidays known to mankind, though celebrated on different dates. In ancient Egypt and in Greece, the harvest festival was celebrated with great rejoicing. The Hindus and the Chinese observed the gathering harvest with a holiday as well. The pagans in ancient Rome celebrated their Thanksgiving in early October. The holiday was dedicated to the goddess of the harvest, Ceres, and the holiday was called Cerealia. Ancient Greeks honored Demeter, the goddess of agriculture. The Catholic Church took over the pagan holiday and it became well established in England, where some of the pagan customs and rituals of the day were observed long after the Holy Roman Empire had disappeared. In England, the harvest home has been observed continuously for centuries. Marla, Barry Fitzgerald here. Although we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here in Ireland, this year more than ever, it's a time to ponder and be thankful for what we do have. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all your listeners. Marla. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. This is Miss Aida from MissAida.com. I am a witch, an author, a santera, a bruja, and a hoodoo practitioner. So I'm going to be giving you a little uh, potpourri of rituals that you can perform around the holiday season. 
I hope that everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving because I am a banned from eating turkey and pumpkin and all the good things because of my Santeria faith. Christmas in my family has always been a religious scenario. But right before Christmas, we would celebrate San Lazaro, Saint Lazarus also known in Santeria as Babaluaye. December 17th is his feast day. I would recommend anyone lighting a candle to him. You don't have to be in the Santeria faith and praise him on December 17th. And then later on in the year, you can come to him for health reasons and for money purposes. So moving along, New Year's Eve is the biggie, as is New Year's Day. So I remember everybody saying, Jose is dying. Jose está muriendo. Jose está muriendo. And I couldn't understand why the same man was dying every New Year. But the house would get washed in the the Cuban tradition as well as the Cuban brujería tradition They would wash the floors and then they would have a separate bucket that was filled only with water and they put that out in the daytime. It is supposed to absorb any type of negative energies. At sundown, my family, who are brujas and valeras and santeras, they would take a buck that bucket or buckets they usually had more than one and they would throw that water out in the street so that it is symbolic that you know streets move away as does the negative energy red underwear was always a big deal and right before midnight one minute before midnight they would start eating 12 grapes, 12 being one month of every year. So they would eat one grape at a time for the last minute until the clock strikes midnight. Now, that is a Cuban brujeria, santeria, palo. They all do that in Cuba. In the hoodoo tradition, one of the things that people do is they sit in a bathtub filled with coins, with money coins. Now, I always wash my money coins before I put them in the bathtub. And I'll sit in the bathtub five minutes before midnight. And I will sit in this tub that is filled with money. And you can add, if you wish, alfalfa to the water because that brings in money. Fumatory herbs bring in money. So that's optional. But Psalm 23 is to draw money. So I will sit in the bathtub with the money and I will recite Psalm 23 repetitiously. And before saying amen, which closes the prayer, I ask that the following year will bring me lots of money. Now, while I'm in the bathtub, at one minute to midnight, I am now eating one grape at a time. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. Last but not least, in the hoodoo tradition, on New Year's Day, it is customary whether it's hoodoo, African-American customs, but we eat black-eyed peas on New Year's Day to bring us luck for the entire year. And these are the rituals that I wanted to share with you. I hope that everybody has a wonderful Christmas, a very, very happy New Year, and I pray that the following year, 2023, will bring everybody health, wealth, and happiness. You can find me on my Facebook page, Miss Aida Psychic. Come chat with me. 
or on my website, MissAida.com. Thank you. Happy holidays and love to all. Thanksgiving, in the guise of the pagan harvest festivals, can be traced right back to ancient Babylon and worship of Semiramis. Celtic pagans and Anglo-Saxons had huge celebrations, Lugnasa and Mabon. These were to honor the first and second harvest blessed upon them by their god and goddesses. Lugnasa marked the beginning of the harvest season, the harvest of grain, the ripening of first fruits, and was traditionally a time of community gatherings, market festivals, horse races, and reunions with distant family and friends. Hello, everybody. This is Bruce Tango. You might have seen me once in a while on that great show called Ghost Hunters with my son and the rest of the guys from TAPS. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great day. Now, the story I'm about to tell you is absolutely true, and it's not your typical uh, get-together with family and friends on Thanksgiving and eat and, you know, loosen up your belts. Uh, Like I said, this is a true story. We usually go to my sister's house. She owns a big home, uh, a two-family, and she lives on the second floor. So, you know, I'm, I'm late. And I'm going over there, and uh, I open up the downstairs, and I start walking up. Uh, Got to be about 15, 20 stairs to get to the to her door. Now, mind you, when you get to the door, uh, as soon as you walk in, there's the dining table, only about four feet away. So I, I arrive at my sister's house. I open the downstairs door, and you know I'm a big guy, and You heard me walking up. Until I get to the door and I don't, I notice I don't hear anybody talking and I know, uh, you know, that I'm late. But again, I don't hear anybody talking. I don't hear a word, which I thought was unusual. So I opened up the door and when I opened up the door, uh, there's a bunch of family and friends just staring at me with their eyes wide open. And it, it no doubt was a look of fright. And I'm saying, what's what's going on? And they says, oh, they, they were all catching their breath. What had happened is about 15 minutes prior to me getting there, they're sitting at the table talking and such. And uh, they heard what they thought was me coming up the stairs. Uh, They heard the downstairs door close and they heard somebody walking up the stairs. All the way up to the door and my sister Everybody thought it was me because I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be there any second. My sister opens up the door and there's nobody standing there. And my sister got freaked out. And so did everybody else because there was no doubt in anybody's mind. And, and David's too. My son David was sitting at the table and he was one of them that said, uh, here comes dad. And everybody could hear me walking up the stairs. And they wanted actually to play a, a trick on me. So when I when I when they heard the last thump and they knew where I was at the door, my sister swung the door open and uh, she was scared out of her wits. So was everybody else, because no one was standing there. So she started yelling at my son David for bringing something home with him from one of the, his investigations. So it, it was actually pretty funny, but it did creep everybody out. And what was funny is that uh, throughout the evening, when that, anybody ever stopped by, they heard him walking up the stairs, and everybody would stop talking. And you could see them, you could see them all, uh, you know, they were holding their breath, wondering if somebody was really coming, or that ghost that David brought was, uh, was outside the door. But, uh, you know, I pulled David on the side, you know, later in the evening. And I said, what happened? And he told me, he said, Dad, 
He says, I have no idea. So she says, all I know is that Aunt Ruthie, which my, is my sister, is bugged out. There, you know, I was shocked, too, because there was no doubt in his mind and everybody, everybody's mind that was sitting there heard somebody walking up the stairs right to the door. And then when my sister uh, opened the door and no one was there, they were shocked. Again, David, gets. we talk about it all the time on Thanksgiving. You know, about the time that David brought something home with him. You know, me particularly, I don't know. It's never happened to me. And uh, if it did, maybe David did. Or who knows what happened that Thanksgiving day. But it's one of those Thanksgiving uh, day stories that we'll be talking about as long as uh, we live. And probably after some of us pass on. But uh, again, I want to wish everybody out there a happy uh, Thanksgiving. Enjoy. No arguments at the table. All right. Just enjoy your food. Enjoy the time together because we're, we're not here forever. So enjoy each other and uh, God bless you all. Have a great night. Have you ever wondered what kind of music your grandparents, great-grandparents, and even your great-great-grandparents listen to during the holiday season? Well, we have a window into the past which will allow you to hear just that. Now, this music precedes TV and even radio, and it was played on a record player called a Victrola, which played a 78 RPM record and had an attached horn used to amplify the sound of the record. Come back with me now a hundred years, way back when my broom had training wheels, and let's listen to a piece of that wonderful past. Carry my pretty toys for all the girls and boys to make them gay and happy Christmas morning. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Dancing to the snow in a one horse open sleigh. For the fear we go, laughing all the way. There's a lot of ring, making spirits bright. Listen, big boy, now that I've got you, babe, goodness, but I'm afraid something's gonna happen to you. Listen, big boy, you got me hooked and how I would die if I should lose you now. Little brown dog, don't I love thee? Ha ha ha, you and me, little brown dog, I do love thee.
away. There's more Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks right after these important messages. It's double the cauldron, double the fun. Parax brings you back-to-back hours of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. First, at 8 p.m., Parax digs into the vault to bring you an encore edition of Stirring the Cauldron. That's 10 years worth of amazing guests, interesting subjects, and all the fun from your favorite show. Then at 9 p.m., Parax presents an all-new hour of Stirring the Cauldron as Marla explores the paranormal realm with brand new topics and all new guests. It's double the cauldron, double the fun, as Para-X presents back-to-back hours of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. And it all begins 8 p.m. Thursday, right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Sometimes, good intentions aren't good enough, and we need a little help to make it through the workday. Some people pray. Others put their noses to the grindstone. But now, you can take a different path and resolve workplace issues in a magical way. From the author of the Ghost of Hollywood series, Workplace Spells, Everyday Magic on the Job, by leading author Marla Brooks. This easy-to-follow magical spell book will help you get past those pesky job-related hurdles. Whether you're new to the craft or a seasoned practitioner, you can make magic happen. Workplace Spells, Everyday Magic on the Job by Marla Brooks would make a great gift. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order online through SchifferBooks.com, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon.com. Workplace Spells, Everyday Magic on the Job by Marla Brooks. Order your copy today. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Here's a message from Barry Strom, the host of Channeling History, heard right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Connie and I hope that all of you are having a great Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's a great holiday. You get a vacation from work, eat a good meal, hopefully see family and friends. Now, when the pilgrims celebrated that first Thanksgiving, they were simply blessed to be alive after all they endured crossing the ocean because of religious persecution. They were not allowed to worship as they pleased and endured an incredible hardship to pursue that right. Now, we're living in a difficult time as well, but this holiday can be an opportunity to bring people together and help others. Our wish is that everyone takes a few moments this weekend to count your blessings and take a moment to help someone that's not as blessed as you are. Maybe just call a family member that's lonely. Many seniors are by themselves and think they're forgotten. Let them know that they're still loved and that people are still thinking about them. Now, for many, Thanksgiving and the Christmas holidays are a time of great depression. Suicide is a huge issue this time of year. Now, Connie and I are incredibly blessed to be able to communicate with the spirit world, so we know the truth of what's around us. We try to bring others these messages in an effort to make their lives a little bit better. So let this holiday season be a time of helping and caring for others. I hope that you think seriously about what I've just said. We're trying to do as much as we can and we hope that you might do so as well. Thank you for being a wonderful person, for listening to Marla's show. We always enjoy being on it. Thank you, and have a great holiday season. Hi, this is Steve Shockley, a.k.a. The Shock. I do an oldie show called Rock with the Shock at www.rockwiththeshock.com. I'm live every Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern playing the greatest hits of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, I've been friends with the fine folks here at Para-X for a very long time, and they wanted me to share a couple of interesting things, and I said, sure. I thought you might enjoy this poem written in 1844 by Lydia Marie Child entitled Boy's Song About Thanksgiving Day that later became better known as over the river and through the wood. Over the river and through the wood to grandfather's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the white and drifted snow. Over the river and through the wood, oh, how the wind does blow. It stings the toes and bites the nose as over the ground we go. Over the river and through the wood, trot fast, my dapple gray. Spring over the ground like a hunting hound. For this is Thanksgiving Day. Over the river and through the wood and straight through the barnyard gate. We seem to go extremely slow. It's so hard to wait. 
over the river and through the wood. Now, Grandmother's cap I spy. Hurrah for the fun! Is the pudding done? Hurrah for pumpkin pie! Now, my story, while it goes back quite a ways, does not quite go back to 1844, although it might as well have. It's the week before Thanksgiving Day, and my mother had a certain Thanksgiving protocol by which she followed, just as her mother did and her mother's mother did before that. Certain other preparations were made prior, that is, procuring the proper items from a list handed down through at least four generations, with a few small changes due to modernization and certain foods now available in prepared or pre-prepared availability. First, the appetizers and garnishes. Fresh celery was number one on the list, as it was to be cut into four-inch long pieces, then get stuffed or filled with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cheese actually invented in New York in 1871 by a man called William Lawrence. Also on the list were green olives stuffed with pimento, gherkin pickles, several two-ounce paper cups to be filled a couple of hours before dinner with a mixture of walnuts, pastel-colored mint candy, and Jordan almonds. Finally, chilled fruit cocktail consisting of diced pears, peaches, cherries, and green grapes in a sweet syrup. Now for the sides. Fresh potatoes for making a mountain of mashed potatoes, fresh sweet potatoes, butter, brown sugar, and a dash of orange juice for making candied sweet potatoes, fresh carrots, butter, brown sugar, and a dash of orange juice for making candied carrots, yellow niblet corn, fresh green beans, bread cubes with a variety of seasonings for making stuffing, all of the ingredients for making flaky dinner biscuits, Cranberry sauce jellied, pumpkin, usually in a 15-ounce can, and a variety of spices with which to bake homemade pumpkin pie. Prepared mincemeat from a jar, dough, and pie baking pans with which to bake a merely homemade mincemeat pie. Ready whip whipped cream in a can. These days were long before Cool Whip. For the main course each year, my mother would procure the largest turkey she could find, which would often run about 30 pounds or more. The turkey was placed in the refrigerator at least a week prior to Thanksgiving in order for it to thaw. The afternoon before Thanksgiving Day, Mom would pull out the innards, that is, the neck, the gizzard, the heart, etc., all of which would get boiled until tender. She pulled all of the meat off the neck, placed it in a bowl, then, using a hand-crank meat grinder, would push all of the other parts, enough to make giblets, which would be divided up for her homemade turkey gravy and her stuffing. She would then prepare and bake the pumpkin pies and mincemeat pies, at least two each, all the night before. Once the pies were all done, she would carefully stuff the turkey and pull it all together using turkey skewers, all pulled together with a twine. Mom would bake the turkey using the same formula every year. She would add three pounds to the weight to account for the stuffing, and then calculate 20 minutes per pound at 225 degrees. So a 30 pound turkey became 33 pounds with stuffing and at 20 minutes per pound would have to slow roast for 11 hours, which was done in the overnight hours. If she put the turkey in at 10 p.m., it would be done by 9 a.m. the following morning after having filled the entire house with the aroma of roasting turkey from about 3 a.m. on. Finally, the day had arrived. In the morning, my brother and I bundled up and went out in the brisk, cold November air to attend the high school's football rival game. By the time we got home, my maternal grandparents, some family friends, and their kids had arrived for dinner. We, of course, were to be seated at the feared kids' folding table and folding chairs in the living room, while the adults got to sit at the main dining room table under the chandelier in plush dining room chairs. We feasted for what seemed like hours, and then laid around like walruses and moaned for what seemed like even longer. We always ate too much. I learned back then, due to the number of selections available, to put far less of each on the plate and it would be fine. I hope I haven't made you too hungry, don't eat too much, and from my family to yours, have a wonderful 
and safe Thanksgiving holiday. Hello, Richard Sennett here, wishing you a very happy Thanksgiving holiday and enjoy that monster of turkey. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Good evening, this is Tabby Cat Gash, wishing everyone a very safe and happy Thanksgiving for 2022. I wanted to share with you that I am very proud to know that one of my maternal ancestors was one of the second generation of people to be born in the Plymouth Colony area and was a babe in arms during the very first Thanksgiving celebration in the New World. And ever since then, my family has been practicing Thanksgiving each and every year with family, friends, loved ones, and it is a tradition that I will always cherish. It has been in my family now for almost 400 years and very proud of it. Again, thank you and have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving season. 2022. Hey everyone, it's Marla. If you like tonight's episode of Stirring the Cauldron and the Archive Podcast as well, take a look at the show's YouTube channel and check out the dozens of shows that are there just waiting to be heard. New shows are added each week, and while you're there, why not subscribe? It's free. And if you click on that tiny little bell icon at the top of the page, you'll be notified when new shows are available. Just go to youtube.com and then type in Stirring the Cauldron Pair X and the link will appear. Just like magic. People who know my website know that every week I do a spell of the week. And because it's Thanksgiving, I created a spell of appreciation, a Thanksgiving spell of appreciation. 
And this being Thanksgiving week, and with so much to do, I would normally do a regular spell that takes time. But this is an appropriate spell because it's short, it's sweet, there's no need for tools of any kind. It's a simple spoken spell that you can do when you have a minute or two to just sit down, take a couple of cleansing breaths, and repeat the following incantation. Fire, water, earth, and air, I thank the elements with this prayer. I also thank spirit that guides me each day and carefully keeps me from going astray. I appreciate both morning and night, the sun and the moon, and the stars that shine bright. I'm thankful for loved ones, both living and gone, and those close friends that I can call upon. I thank the things that make me smile and even the frowns every once in a while. There's so much more that I can say, but we'll leave that for another day. So mote it be. Thank you for joining me tonight, and I hope that you're not going to have too much of a turkey hangover. Welcome to the holiday season, everybody, and until next time, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time 
for another great guest and more Cauldron Stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2018. The Path of the Goblin King by Kevin MacLeod is licensed through Incompetech.com. Day. 